Hey there everyone, Mike here with a special holiday edition of Cybersecurity Training, trying to walk you through how to spot a bad text message. And so we're gonna look at messages that might wanna steal your information or get you to install some software to take control of your phone. And a lot of these are happening, especially during the holidays now when we're ordering things and getting a lot more alerts. So I received a message yesterday morning early uh, saying that my package is at the USPS warehouse, but it can't be delivered because it does not have enough information. So when I look at this message now, it looks pretty obvious that it's a bad message. But let's take a look at what might have caught me off guard so that I might have followed the instructions. The first thing is it's an urgent message. Now, like I just said, many people are ordering packages and doing things, so they might actually uh, have this in context. This might make sense to someone who just ordered something from Amazon that might be uh, shipped uh, using the U.S. Postal Service. Uh, so I might go like, oh my gosh, I have to get that 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 present or else you know someone's gonna be disappointed at Christmas. I better follow these instructions quickly. Uh, so the urgency of the message is the first thing we want to take a look at. It's the first red flag. The second thing is when it came in. So in order to make something more urgent, it, it helps to catch someone off guard. So it's early in the morning, late at night, sometime when you're least expecting it, when you're not very awake, uh, when you're just your guard's gonna be down. In this case, it came at 6.30 in the morning, and a lot of people aren't necessarily up at that time, and they're half awake, and they get this urgent message, and they're more likely to comply with it. Uh, so that's the second one, is the time it comes in. It's a weird time. The third one is where it came from. As you can see at the top here, uh, I, I see a, a very obvious personal email address. And so that right there is a flag. Now, we gotta remember though, this came in early in the morning when I at least expected it with an urgent message. So there's a good chance that it's gonna catch at least some people off guard where they're not even gonna notice that and comply with the request. So that's the third one though, is where it came from. The fourth thing is, is where does it want me to go? And so in this case, it's sending me to a place called usps.com help st.com. Now, this is a little tricky because a lot of times people are trained these days to look for this .com and it looks very official to someone who's not expecting an email and getting an urgent request. I saw usps.com and that looked official enough to me. Well, in this case, it's actually the com-helpst.com that is the real address it's sending me to. And let's take a look at where that's actually registered to or registered from. And as you see, I did a quick look up here at um, the website where you can look these things up, which that's not important. I just want to give you an example here. Uh, this is registered out of Singapore and looks like it's registered through Alibaba.com's cloud. Now, before everybody starts talking conspiracy theories and all this, there's a strong chance it's not anything to do with Alibaba.com. It's just using their cloud services. And there's a, there's a chance it's not even actually registered in Singapore. It could be registered anywhere. But here's the main point. The main point is that it's clearly not USPS because they're clearly not going to register the USPS or the US Postal Service out of Singapore. So we, we can, without even taking much risk at all, is able to look that up. And maybe that's another video how to look those type of things up. But um, that's clearly not a legitimate address for the US Postal Service. So that's the, the next thing was, or the next to last thing was that it's not a legitimate address it's taking me to. The last thing I want to point out is the over complexity of the instructions. Now, many of us are used to getting complex instructions from technology, people, services, things like that. And this does not disappoint. It says, please reply yes, then exit the text message and go open it again and activate the link or copy the link to your Safari browser. Uh, so again, that's another little ploy to take you off guard um, and possibly overcome certain security features where the link in this case it did not show up my regular services um, did block it because it wasn't in my contact list so it didn't make the link appear as a link anyway so it's trying to overcome all that but it also looks very complicated and adds to their kind of sense of urgency to try to get me to follow the instructions and make it look official so that's it. Now, what, what's the biggest thing to do is whenever you receive any kind of email or text message that has you do some type of instruction, especially when it might make sense because you ordered something or did something recently that would prompt you to get a text message like this, is to just stop. Just There is really nothing that urgent that makes you have to do it right away. Uh, if you receive something early in the morning, the best thing to do is just wait till later and say, well, uh, this doesn't make sense. I'm going to that should be the first thing that comes to your mind is I'm not going to do anything right now while I'm half awake 
or half asleep. So that's the first thing. Uh, and then the next thing is, is if you do something like that, there's always a way to verify something without following the uh, actual instructions. You know, you could go to the USP, US Postal Service, or you can go to the, your original place where you ordered it from and check on the order status and things like that. So uh, the bottom line is, if you just, if we most of the time pause, think, look at it from a different context, you're going to be able to spot these things pretty easily and have hopefully a happy, happier holiday than I would have had if I would have followed these instructions. Finally, the last thing to do is go ahead and either delete the text message or what I like to do is uh, click the little report junk uh, button that I have on there. Now I can see on the bottom it says delete and report junk. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And this text message is gone. Well, that's it. I hope this video helps you have a really safe holiday. Thanks for watching.